is gut health testing worth it? Are gut tests worth the money or are they scams or do they fall somewhere in between? Well, by the end of this video, you'll know the details about gut health testing and which ones might actually be worth it. Hi, I'm Kelsey Ale, nutritional therapist, and for the best gut health and nutrition advice, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Now, before I dive in, I want to say that as a nutritional therapist, I do a lot of lab testing with my clients, and this does include gut health testing. I will typically recommend a gut health test for most people, but especially if you experience digestive symptoms like bloating, constipation, diarrhea, cramping, if you have skin conditions like eczema or acne, and especially if you have autoimmune conditions. Poor gut health is pretty much always connected to these issues and many other issues. So I do a lot of gut health testing. The kind of gut health testing that I've done over the years has changed as technology has advanced and new kinds of tests have become available. And I have definitely seen certain tests be so extremely beneficial to people. And generally speaking, I have seen some tests be pretty much worthless. Next, what are we even talking about when we say gut health test? It's a really broad term. So let's go ahead and narrow it down to talk specifically about tests that assess the function of your large intestine and its accessory organs. So we're talking about your colon, your pancreas, and your liver and your gallbladder specifically. Now, a good gut health test is going to be really thorough. It's going to give you a very darn long list of bacteria, yeast, fungus, parasites, viruses, in addition to your digestive function and potential markers of inflammation that are going on in your digestive tract. So all of that can be found in just one test if you're doing a good gut health test. And let's also clarify that gut health tests are not the same as food sensitivity tests and gut health tests can be performed a couple of different ways, but the primary specimen that is used in gut health testing is stool. That's poop. <laughs> and uh, blood and urine and saliva are typically not used in gut health testing, although breath tests are sometimes used and we'll talk about when to use a breath test in just a second, but primarily we're gonna be dealing with poop. A gut health test can also be different from a microbiome test. A microbiome test would tend to look at just the microorganisms, so that's the bacteria, the yeast, the fungus, the parasites, the viruses, but it wouldn't look at digestive function and it wouldn't necessarily look at inflammatory markers either. And totally curious, have you ever done any sort of gut health test? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I'd also be really curious to know what your experience was in doing said gut health test, or maybe you've never done it at all. I don't know, let me know in the comments. So back to the question at hand, are gut health tests worth it? Well, short answer is it depends, but yes, a good gut health test can be worth a thousand words or a thousand dollars in the sense that it saves you both time and money. And my personal opinion and perspective is test, don't guess, because so many symptoms can look very similar on the outside, but have wildly different causes on the inside. And by getting that gut health test, you're getting clarity and very detailed information about what's really going on inside of you. And it can be so revolutionary for your health, the way you approach your body and the way you approach healing your gut. I've reviewed the results from some test kits, microbiome test kits that are available out there for you to order online. And I wanna say as a practitioner that the results that they give you are pretty much useless unless you're just planning on ordering the supplements they recommend. Uh, they don't give you the kind of detailed information that you would need as a practitioner to develop a really effective gut healing protocol. They just kind of give you broad overviews and a general big picture. So again, those results for my purposes in building really efficient gut healing protocols were not helpful. So what kind of gut health is the best to do? One word, poop. <laughs> poop is the best 
You can get certain information from breath tests, but we'll talk about why that isn't the best idea again in just a second. So yeah, just give me poop any day. So breath tests for gut health. I don't typically recommend them for most people because they're limited and you'll only use them in very specific scenarios. They're gonna be testing for one of two things, either H. pylori, which is an infection in your stomach, or SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, which is just what the name sounds like. It is an overgrowth or a displacement of bacteria into your small intestine. So breath tests will look for one or the other of these bacterial infections, but you don't get all that great information about your digestive health or inflammatory markers or other parasites or bacteria that might be happening in your large intestine or other areas of your body like you would when you do a poop test. Also, poop tests can be performed in the comfort of your own commode, which is really nice when you're handling something sensitive like stool. And you do have to handle your own business but it's over in a matter of minutes. I've done it personally. I have had many clients who were super skeeved out by the idea who made it through and lived to talk about it. So it's actually not that big of a deal. <laughs> Poop is also the most reliable way to collect viable specimens from your large intestine, meaning the do you do carries with it a better record of what's going on with your gut health than does your breath, or your urine, or your saliva, or your blood. But we can narrow it down even further when it comes to poop tests because the kind of analysis they do in the lab after you send your poop in actually matters a lot. Traditionally, a lab would use microscopy or looking at your poop under a microscope with their eyeballs. That's not embarrassing or culturing, meaning they take a sample of your stool and put it in a specific environment to try to encourage the growth of anything that might be in there so they can see that it exists. But culturing and microscopy can sometimes miss up to about 50% of the germs that would otherwise be detected because number one, they're looking at a small sample of the already small sample that you sent in. So the microorganisms, microorganisms <laughs> might just not be present in that sample that they're looking at. And the microorganisms that are present in the sample might just not be viable for viewing or for culturing because the conditions on the way to the lab may have damaged them or killed them. It could also be the case that the culturing environment that the specimen is being put in doesn't actually replicate the environment that that organism thrives in. So it's not really given a chance to grow and so it's invisible, it doesn't show up on the test even though it's up in your gut. But there's newer technology, meaning technology that's been developed within the last 40 years that's turning out to be really reliable. It's called qPCR testing or quantitative polymerase chain reaction testing. I know it's a very sciencey name. To put it simply, PCR testing hunts for and then amplifies the DNA of any microbes that are present in the sample that you provide. And not only is PCR testing more sensitive at picking up on the presence of pathogens, but it's also more effective at determining the difference of different types of pathogens that might be present in the sample. So for example, maybe you have a couple of different kinds of bacteria that are overgrowing or present. PCR testing can more efficiently identify the differences between those two bacteria, which is actually really important when it comes to determining the protocol that you're going to use to rebalance your gut health because different types of pathogens require different protocols. So PCR testing is turning out to be a much more efficient and effective method of gut health testing than microscopy or culturing the traditional methods were. So again, back to our original question, is gut health testing worth it? Well, it really depends on the kind of test you're taking and how it's analyzed in the lab. And that makes all the difference between a good gut health test and a really not worth it gut health test. So to sum it up, in my opinion, yes, 
PCR stool-based gut health tests are really worth it and they can be really revolutionary to your health. If you're someone who has lived with and suffered with digestive issues or autoimmune issues and you know you're eating as well as you possibly can and you're doing everything you can to support your digestion, it's probably time to do a gut health test. If you're interested in learning more about how gut health testing can help you resolve your chronic health issues and feel amazing in your own skin again, and if you're ready to work one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner to develop a custom gut healing and nutrition protocol, then go ahead and click the link below this video. I just need a little bit of information from you and then we can hop on the phone to see if gut health testing is right for you. You can also go ahead and check out the other videos that I have on naturally healing your gut. Remember, if you like this video and found the information helpful, please hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and of course, share with your friends. I'll see you next time. I would also love to know